very much for that very warm welcome. I'm, before we launch into proceedings, I'm just going to say um, just a few words about what our aims for today are. Um, when we were discussing, A, the radical step of moving our AGM out of London this year, um, and B, what the topic of our traditional um, AGM event might be, the, the, obvious, the obvious choice seemed to be to talk about community archaeology and the rise of public archaeology. And the obvious choice to do that was in York and in partnership, obviously, with the CBA and with Archaeology Scotland. We've seen a huge rise in the idea of community and public archaeology over the last few years. Obviously, that's not a new thing. This is, this is we must always remember, this is where archaeology came from. Um, but there's been an, an increased interest, and certainly from CIFA's point of view, an increased in interest in the idea of public benefit over the last few years, and particularly public benefit coming out of developer-funded and developer-led archaeology. Uh, PPS5, short-lived as it was, gave us an opportunity to rethink how we, how we address public benefit within developer-funded work. And the Southport report made a number of recommendations about how public benefit community archaeology and just involving the community could be built into more commercial practice. Alongside that, we've also seen within archaeology and outside a massive increase in the idea of citizen science and a number of very, very successful projects. Um, alongside great involvement in community planning, active citizenship and increased levels of HLF funding um, for community work. And this has thrown up a number of issues. It's thrown up an array of amazing case studies of successful projects, but also a lot of questions for us as professionals about the role of community groups and individuals within archaeology, and also our roles as, as facilitators, as, as professionals able to make information available, make opportunities available. Um, and then questions about who monitors quality of work, questions about professional standards, questions about whether we have the skills as archaeologists to facilitate and interact with the community in the most effective way. So that's part of the purpose of today really. There are lots of questions thrown up. We're aware of, of lots of organisations and individuals who are coming up, up with answers to these questions and today is an opportunity to share some of those lessons learned and some of those answers to make sure that we can we can go forward in, in, a, in a positive way and learn from each other's experiences. We've seen sessions at previous um, IFA and CIFA conferences and sessions at TAG about the role of archaeology in terms of re-engaging with, with disadvantaged or disenfranchised groups, the role of archaeology um, in terms of rehabilitation with, with different uh, sections of society. And then also the questions as, as to whether we as archaeologists are actually qualified to act in the role of what some people might see as becoming, becoming social workers. So I think there are a number of different interesting dimensions that we might want to explore today feeling sometimes that possibly we're straying beyond the boundaries of our own expertise into, in, into that territory. And I think there's a, there's a really strong need to share good practice, um, particularly around evaluation, which I know some organisations are starting to look at very seriously. So there are lots of questions. Um, we've split the day up into three sessions. Um, the first session, which will be looking at communities as practitioners and building capacity up across the UK is chaired by uh, Dr. Mike Hayworth from the CBA. We've got a second session then after coffee break which looks at the interface between community archaeology and development in the commercial world and then a third session after lunch looking at the, the role of communities in generating research and in citizen science and knowledge uh, creation. Each session will be introduced by the session chair and we'll have a number of short presentations to kick off the discussion really, to stimulate um, ideas and thoughts and then a series of facilitated round table <coughs> discussions following on from that. Each table will have a, a facilitator and we'll need to nominate a scribe um, to take notes. You'll also notice that you have um, a piece of paper on your table and post-it notes. Because we're trying to cram in such a lot today, 
chairs have been instructed to chair their sessions very tightly, but if there are points that, that are raised and possibly fall slightly outside the theme of the session, then you are encouraged to write them on the post-it notes, stick them on the piece of paper, and we will gather that all together at the end of the day.